What is going on guys? Star Sizzle here today and today I've got a special guest on the boat once again. I've got my brother Connor with us and we are offshore fishing. We've got a bunch of baits with us, a bunch of live bait that we worked hard to catch this morning. And we have about four different kinds of uh, kinds of bait, which I'll show you in a little bit. But Connor's hooked up on a fish. Let's see what it is. All right, come back here. You don't want to keep it away from the engine. All right, I'm letting it stop, stop reeling. We got a huge runner. All right, good job. This is our first fish of the day. We got a runner in the boat. This is a horse runner. These guys we actually have in our live well right now for bait. But this is a monster. So a good start to the day, and uh, we're gonna get lines back out and catch more fish. Yeah, put that, um, put that in the upright rod holder. I hooked up on a fish, and now I know what it is. It's a bonito, uh, bonita, like what we like to call them. I know a lot of you have been saying they're false albacore, but you know, in different regions we call fish different names. So down here we call them bonitas, and uh, it's a good bait. I'm trying to find whatever pelagics or whatever fish want to bite today. But you're always going to have to weed through the bonitas to get to the good fish. So this is a solid bonita. All right, you're done, buddy. Let's get you in the boat. Solid bonita. Good shot. Another bonita. Alright, you pick it up and then I'm gonna have you fight this fish. Um, just, just bring in that line, that hook and line. Just bring that in. You, no. Okay, that's perfect. Do that. Yep. And then put the hook of the leader on the eye of the uh, rod, fishing rod. Now he knows he's hooked. Alright, I'm gonna have Connor fight this one. Connor's guest on the boat today, bend some rods. We're finally getting into a, de a zone, a depth, where we're catching fish. Here you go. All right, keep, let him run when he wants to run. And then just reel, don't need to pump. You just you don't need to um, you know, lift the rod and pump, just kind of just reel on him. So you can see you're not getting line. You hear that weird noise? Yeah, now you're getting line. Just stop reeling when that thing makes that weird noise. All right, so we just scored. Connor just caught a blackfin tuna. Awesome. He's a little guy, but you can see how gorgeous he is. And we could tell that this was not a bonita. Just by the way he was fighting, he was staying down deep, and tuna fight all the way to the surface. And even though this was a small one, he put up a heck of a fight for Connor. So this is going to be delicious sushi tonight. And um, as far as the bonitas go, they kind of just come to the surface and they do a lot of head shakes and they're all over the place when they fight you versus a tuna and they stay down deep and they do those circles. So solid fish and we're gonna get lines back out and catch some more. Yes, keep reeling and then just tension and now take over from me. Good job. All that fish. All right, so the bite is apparently on fire. It's the middle of the day. And um, unfortunately, we didn't go fishing as early today as we would have liked, but it is what it is long story short but we're out here and we made the best of it and it is the middle of the day literally it's like noon but we are on an epic bite this afternoon fish are just starting to bite and connor is now hooked up to another fish let him take drag if he wants to and this was a good fish i was holding the rod and i felt the fish immediately just take off it almost took off like a mutton snapper you want to hold your rod just a little that way yep you see this weight in the water over here so i want to make sure we're separated from that but um yeah, Connor's having a blast. It's a gorgeous day out here. It was a little windy this morning, but now it's like perfect conditions out here. It's a beautiful day, and there's not a whole lot of boats out here either. So we got the whole ocean to ourselves. And have a just a bonus. Sorry, stop reeling. We have got another runner. Okay. All the monsters, all the runners are monsters today, man. We usually use little six-inch ones to, you know, to live bait with for kingfish, but these guys are. Absolute slobs we're catching. Hooked up again. We have reset our drift so that way we could. Uh, oh, I'm wrapped in your line. Okay. Um, okay. All right, hold on. <laughs> we got a big mess going on here. Let me just get this fish into the boat, but I was just jigging and it instantly hooked up to a runner. He just cleared himself. Awesome. Let me show you this jig I've been using too that I like. And no, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I really like this jig. And I'll show you the reason why. 
But as soon as I dropped this down, I instantly hooked up on this massive blue runner. Been catching massive blue runners all day. And then with some tunas mixed in between, but let's release this guy. But this lure, this jig, is pretty cool. It's from Savage Gear. And you can see here, it's like half squid, right, on this side. And then on this side, it's a fish. So it's pretty cool. And I like pink and white. That works well for me. This is a 150... 160 gram weighted uh it's a 160 gram jig so that way i can get it down fast and quick and this seems to work great so if you're interested i'll leave a link down in the description below frank is now hooked up on a fish we finally let frank reel in a few fish today yeah, make sure to give a good side <laughs> yes get silent frank's good side <laughs> frank the tank there's no good side yes good for reeling that fish what is he doing over here? He's taking his good old time. He's bigger now. He's oh yeah, now he's digging. Wow. I think that's a solid tuna fish, honestly. It's really digging. It's so he's just taking out. his time with it, yeah. And uh, we're just trying to make sure it's and we're just trying to, you know, not put a whole lot of drag on this fish. We don't want to lose it. I'm only using a 30-pound leader. So as soon as we get this fish, I'm going to show you the rig that I'm using to catch these fish. And I have different rigs on each rod, but I'll show you this particular rod that we've been getting a lot of bites on. So uh, I'll show you that in just a minute. It's starting to come up now. I'll get my weight here in a second. All right. My weight really thought it was a black man, the way he was fighting down deep. But that is a solid bonita. Check him out. Gorgeous colors on this guy. Gorgeous. Look how green he is right now. He's lit up. Sick. All right, we're going to get live back out, catch some more fish. This guy is bait. Seen the seen Circle hook perfectly in the corner of the mouth. And I just took the hook out with my bubble blade pliers. So real quick, let me show you the setup and this actual rig that I am using right now. We just caught that bonita on, and also we caught a black fin and those blue runners on. Uh, real quick, because I need to get back to fishing. But basically starting with the hook, this is an... 5 aught Mustad circle hook, and you can see it's a thin wire hook. I like to use thin wire when I'm bottom fishing. Sorry, fish are making noises in the boat. Um, and then I got it, I've got it. i got it tied on with a snell hook. And I love to use a snell hook with applications like bottom fishing and also just drifting back live baits in general. It really works and it really hooks that fish in the corner of the mouth because if you put it on your hand like this, you can see how I instantly hook my finger just like that. So the snell actually helps the circle hook do its job. And then I have that tied on. This is a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and it's 15 foot long. And a lot of you guys have been asking why such a long leader? Well, the reason you use a long leader is because this is a mutton rig. This would be your standard mutton rig and a lot of people even like to use leaders that are longer than that, 20, 30, 40 feet long, but it gets a little complicated that long. So 15 feet is perfect for us. And that way, it's a perfect presentation. Mutton snapper and other snapper as well, they don't like to see that weight bouncing on the bottom. So you want to have a good distance of your bait away from that weight. So a 15-foot leader is a good amount. And um, that way, the fish will come up and it looks like a natural presentation compared to a little 3-foot leader with the weight bouncing around. And mutton snapper gets spooked real fast. They're not going to eat your bait. They're smart fish. So you're trying to, out you're trying to trick them into biting your bait. And then just really quick, at the end of my 15 foot leader, you can see I have it tied on with a uni knot and then I got a heavy duty mustad swivel right there. And then I also have a bead and the bead is connected to this side of the braid to my main line. And that's mainly so my weight doesn't slam into the swivel every time it goes down like that. So that protects the swivel and then this is an num this is an 8 ounce egg sinker. And then I have that tied on with to my main line which is 50 pound braid. And um, I just have my standard little blue Maxell rod that I like to use and my uh, Tsunami rod. So we're going to drop it down, get some more fish, and hopefully uh, we get something good. Check it out. We got some more dinner in the boat. Frank actually just caught this fish. This is a yellow jack, I believe. Um, also, I know people like to call them a green jack, and they actually look very similar to a rainbow runner. A rainbow runner has these colors, these gorgeous blues and yellows on them. Check them out. Even those stripes are cool looking on them. But it's a gorgeous fish, and actually a really hard fighting fish as well, and quite delicious. It's one of the most delicious fish in the sea, and a lot of people actually prefer this. Like, this is their number one choice of fish to eat. So, yellow jack is delicious. I also believe you can eat it as sushi. Um, you may be able to. I've never done that, but it's a really delicious, firm, white meat. So, we've got some more dinner in the boat. Score! Oh my god, it's swimming up. It's a sail. I got the sail. 
Something weird I've got hooked up right now. He's up and down. It's probably a bonita. But he's up and down and all over the place. And my weight hit bottom. And when it hit bottom, it went slack. And then when it goes slack, like, just, just, just did. Like, the fish is swimming up with the weight. So I thought it was a sailfish at sight for a second because I have caught sailfish bottom fishing before. Sure, Damn, he's flying. flying across the surface. Yeah, for sure. Look at him. He might get chased by something. Look at him. I got a rod, Frank. I got it. I got it. He's going insane. Look at him. Oh, insane surface splashes. He might get blown up. Look at him running. Yeah, grab that rod. Huge freaking shark chasing him. That's what it was. Huge shark down there. He's right here. He's circling on that side of the boat. Wow, okay. That's why my Bonita was going absolutely insane on the surface there. We had a feeling he was getting sh chased by a predator, and sure enough, as soon as he just popped off, he hit my engine by accident. As soon as he popped up, I saw a huge shark rise up from the depths. We have got some crazy big ocean predators by our boat right now. When I cooked that bonita, I know he actually got ate, eaten by the sharks. And um, I accidentally got my line on my engine. As soon as I went to go get the line, I saw huge shadows from the depths. And uh, there is like two or three massive reef sharks right down here. I've got a blue runner I caught earlier on a rope. Here he comes. Massive bull sharks, reef sharks. Look at him. Oh, oh. Make sure you watch it next week. We're on Friday and Saturday, so. And if you're there not you sure the color of my hair, 